Welcome back to the channel. So today I've brought MCQ test from 100 races part 2. 100 races part 1 MCQ test has already been uploaded 50 questions from that part and now I have 30 questions from the second part. So let's get started. Now before that you need to revise the test. First of all 100 races part 2 a quick explanation and after that you can take this test. 100 races part 1 also it's uploaded. So short questions are there. Easy and quick revision. So CBSE sample paper questions are also included there so you can revise it from there and then take the 50 MCQ test. Now after all this the important thing is a mock test. A mock test is being prepared for you for your complete MCQ practice of the paper before you sit for your final exam. So it will be released in the first week of November for class 10 and only for my subscribers. So if you want to receive the test, you just need to send an email ID on my Instagram account and get yourself registered. So the link I will be giving in the description box also. Now let's get started with this test. So question number one, I'll be reading only the questions, right counting from 1 to 30 and then get started. So first one, Miss Mason studied the note thoughtfully because... Second one, how would you describe Miss Mason's state of mind on receiving the note from Wanda's father? So you can pause, read the options carefully and then decide. Now this is the note. Dear teacher, my Wanda will not come to your school anymore. Jay calls you. Now we move away to big city. No more holler pollock. No more ask why funny name. Plenty of funny names in the big city. Yours truly, Jan Petronsky. The tone of the first line of the note sent by Wanda's father is. Next one. The word Pollock in the note indicates. Fifth. Why does Wanda's father write plenty of funny names in the big city in the note? Sixth. A deep silence met the reading of this letter. Why was there silence in the room? Seventh, now another extract from the chapter. I'm sure that none of the boys and girls in room 13 would purposely and deliberately hurt anyone's feelings because his or her name happened to be a long, unfamiliar one. I prefer to think that what was said was said in thoughtlessness. I know that all of you feel the way I do. That is, this is a very unfortunate thing to have happened. Unfortunate and sad both. And I want you all to think about it. So what is the tone of the teacher in the above lines? Next one. Why does the teacher use the words like I'm sure, purposely, deliberately, and then I prefer to think in the extract. It should be in the extract, not in the first line. Then question number nine. In the question given below, there are two statements marked as assertion, that is A, and reason is R. So mark your answer as per the options given. So carefully read the assertion and reason and then decide your answer. Assertion is, Mary could not put her mind on her work. And reason is, Mary was jealous of Peggy. Tenth one, she had stood by silently and that was just as bad as what Peggy had done. Worse, she was a coward. So out of the quotes given below, which quote brings forth what exactly Mary was going through? So this statement tells us Mary's state of mind. And these are the quotes below which justify what she was feeling at that time. So decide which quote justifies what was going on in Mary's mind at that time. Next one, now, 11th. She could not, sorry, she could put herself in Wanda's shoes, which out of the following sentences mean the same as what Mary meant in the above line. Twelfth, Mary wanted to tell Wanda something. What do you think she wanted to tell her? So Mary all the time was wishing only if they could meet Wanda. So what actually she wanted to say to Wanda? Thirteenth, again, this is a line from the chapter. The part of the town that wore such a forbidding air on this kind of a November afternoon, drizzly, damp and dismal. So which word does not have the same meaning as forbidding in the above line? Fourteenth is, the literary device used in the above line is. Fifteenth, I thought she was too dumb and gay. Look how she can draw. Here Peggy's dialogue portrays her. 
16th is what important conclusion did Mary reach after she came back from Boggins Heights without finding Wanda there? 17th, she might not even have won the contest otherwise. In the light of the above statement, what according to Peggy were the reasons for Wanda's win? 18th, Mary turned this idea carefully over in her head. What was going on in Mary's mind? So this idea is the above statement. She might not even have won the contest otherwise. So what did Mary think about it? Mary turned this idea carefully over in her head. So what was going on in her mind? 19th, Mary and Peggy spent the afternoon, Saturday afternoon together. So what was on their mind? 20th, what did both the girls write in their letter to Wanda? That way, first, at what address was the letter posted by the girls? Next one, why did the girls believe that Wanda had received their letter? Now next one, Wanda's letter showed her mixed feelings towards room 13, which in the light of the past happenings will be the correct interpretation of her letter. So Miss Mason receives Wanda's letter on the last day of the school and the letter shows mixed feelings of Wanda towards room 13. So now you have to pick out the answer, which according to you is the correct interpretation of what she is writing and what she is feeling. 24th, the air smelled like Christmas. So what does this mean? 25th, what did I say, said Peggy. She must have really liked us. Anyway, so what convinced the girls that Wanda had really liked them? 26th, what stopped, sorry, what had stopped Mary from standing against Peggy? 27th, what did the teacher receive on the last day of the school? Now 28th, in the question given below, there are two statements, sorry again. So these are the two statements. You have to pick what the statements say according to the options given. So first is assertion. And R is reason. So assertion is Mary was a coward and equally responsible in mistreating Wanda. Reason is her silence was as bad as Peggy's act. So pick, read the options and pick accordingly. 29th. For which celebration was room 13 decked up? Next one. This is the last question. How was room 13 decorated? So now these are the questions from the second part, 50 from the first part and 30 from the second part. So it is a complete preparation for your exams. Now it's time to check the answers. So here are the answers for first 10. So do consider subscribing to the channel so that you can get the mock test and you can check your performance. These are from 11 to 20th. Now, 14th question. The literary device in the 14th question, it is alliteration and personification. So I know you can recognize alliteration, but there's personification also. Alliteration is the sound is repeating. And personification is the line says the town that wore. So therefore, it is a quality of a wearing something. So it is personification. Now, next from 21 to 30th. Now after this, it's time to check the performance, check your grade. So these are the grades. So check in which category do you fall. And after that, bring changes in your revision pattern so that all of you can fall in the first category. Do give a thumbs up to the video and also subscribe to the channel and receive the mock test before your exams. So that's all for today. Thank you all of you and stay prepared.